Hi, I'm Roland Sawatsky. I'm the Curator of History here at the Manitoba Museum, and this is for the Winnipeg 150th. In the Winnipeg Gallery here, we have this great, huge artifact case of over 100 artifacts spanning 150 years and more. So Winnipeg started as a small merchant village, really just a crossroad of Portage and Maine, in 1862. Uh, and it was surrounded by the larger parishes of the Red River Settlement. But after Manitoba Joint Confederation in 1870, there were aspirations of these businessmen to make it more than just a village. And by the end of 1873, they decided that it was time to call themselves a city, and they incorporated as a city officially in January 1874. But there wasn't much going on still. It was just a few hundred people, a bunch of wooden buildings, and they were hoping for something bigger than this. One of the things they really wanted to bring in was the railway. This would be the ticket to wealth because it would make them the hub of everything coming east and west. So they were eventually able to convince the railroad to come through Winnipeg to this new city, and then that really supercharged immigration by the 1880s, and then Winnipeg really started to grow. But there's a darker side to this as well. When that railway was brought in, it went right through, just north of the city, and it divided a big portion of what would become Winnipeg from the south and north. And the north end was where a lot of uh, recent immigrants would be settling right away, people who didn't have a lot of money to start with, uh, and it became this place that was impoverished, um, and had, people had sort of a low view of the north end. And that structure that was created by the railroad still exists today, and there's still that divide in Winnipeg, which is very unfortunate. Another part of the story is the arrival of uh, Ontario people uh, into the Red River Settlement. This was something that was relatively new at the time. Most of the settlers were from other areas, uh, especially from um, Scotland. They were uh, also French Métis, uh, and there was an indigenous uh, parish, St. Peter's. And so they had many different backgrounds, spoke different languages, and got along fairly well. And then the Ontario Protestant group came. And when they came here, a lot of them were bent on revenge against uh, Louis Riel and the French-speaking Métis um, because they were angry about uh, the execution of Thomas Scott uh, and a number of other things. And so when they came, they were, uh, some of them were very angry and Louis Riel and, and some of his leaders had left already and they were upset and there was no, um, there was no focus for their revenge. So many became quite violent and, and assaulted French-speaking Métis people in the Red River Settlement. And it got so bad it was called a reign of terror. And many Métis felt they had to leave the, um, the Red River area altogether and move further west. Again, that's another dark part of this period. One of those Red River Expeditionary Force men was William Alloway. We don't believe that William was one of this uh, violent group, but he decided to stay in Winnipeg and try and make his fortune. And eventually, he did. He was a partner in the Champion and Alloway Bank, and he became a millionaire. This is his desk, and we also have his pocket watch here in the collection. But that really speaks to the beginning of this industrial uh, capitalist society in Winnipeg and the economic disparity that you have after the 1880s and 1890s, which results really in the Winnipeg General Strike. To learn more about how this early development of Winnipeg structured later developments in the city, please come down to the Winnipeg Gallery.